morning, guys. We'll be doing our pre-teen Sunday school lesson today, and I begin to think about the lesson and where that we might go and uh, the way that God would lead us in it. And we're actually going to be over in the book of Luke today. And I'll give you a few minutes to get there, but it's in Luke chapter 9, starting at verse 57. And we're going to go through about uh, about five or six verses here. <clears throat> but I, I begin to think about, it's the new year, so I'll tell you it's happy new year. And I begin to think about all the things that we've seen happen in, in 2020 and uh, you could say it's not been the best year for a lot of people, right? Um, and I began to think about what the new year will bring for us. And, and there's no way that we can know, but I know that we, we have to go forward in this year. And we have to press toward the mark, as the Bible says. So we need to do our very best, and, and I want to try to do my best today to, to teach you what the Lord showed me in this lesson but as we get into it, this is the book of Luke, and, and Jesus is fixing to talk to some, I'll call them potential disciples here. So, like I said, the book of Luke, chapter 9, starting at verse 57, it says, And it came to pass that as they went in the way, a certain man said unto him, Lord, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. So this man, right, he came to Jesus, he uh, heard about Jesus and he came to him and said he's going to follow him wherever wherever that Jesus is going to go he's going to go with him and I think Jesus here is fixing to tell him you need to put a little more thought into it than that and he goes on in 58 it says and Jesus said unto him foxes have holes and birds of the air have nests but the son of man hath not where to lay his head so he's letting him know this is not going to be something that's always just easy. You're going to have to go out in this world, and you're not going to have a home that you're going to be able to walk into. We're going to go from town to town, village to village, however you want to call it, and we're going to spread the gospel. This thing is not going to be just the way you've made it to sound like, and, and I think if we're not careful, we're just like this man. We tell Jesus we'll do whatever he asks us to do, and he tells us to do something, and we'll say, eh, I don't know about that, Jesus. We, we begin to uh, not count the cost of what we're actually going after, right? And I want you to think about this new year, that if you set yourself to following after God, if you set yourself to uh, being the best Christian that you can be, what are you actually going to do? Have you counted up those costs that it's going to be? Uh, the Bible teaches me plainly that God will help us in whatever that we go to do. Um, but if we're not willing to do those things, then we don't need to be saying that we're going to do them, right? Um, and I, I made up my mind. and This was something I had a lot of trouble with uh, when the Lord... Uh, called me to preach is I knew it was something that lasted forever you know it wasn't something that oh well, you just get tired of it here after a while or this or that would happen after a while this is something that you need to decide you know that that you're actually going to stick with it you know no matter what comes along in your life and no matter what uh, hand you're dealt so to speak that you're going to do exactly what God wants you to do. So count the cost when you tell God you're going to do something. And set your mind that no matter what happens, you're going to do it. It says in 59, it says, And he said unto another, Follow me. But he said, Lord, suffer me first to go and bury my father. So this is Jesus talking to a different man, right? Just a man that he, he come up on. It don't really tell us who he was, but obviously Jesus seen something in him. He says in 60, Jesus said unto him, Let the dead bury their dead, but go thou and preach the kingdom of God. So Jesus is not being mean to him here when he says, Let the dead bury their dead. This is more of a request for this man to go back home and wait till 
um, his father was to die or whatever, you know. This is not something of uh, Jesus saying, no, don't go bury your father. This is something of he wants to go back home and wait until dad dies, and then he can begin this ministry that we're talking about here. And he goes on in 61. He says, And another also said, Lord, I will follow thee, but let me first go bid them farewell, which are at home at my house. And Jesus said unto him, No man having put his hand to the plow, and looking back, is fit for the kingdom of God. Um, this is some very strong scripture here, you know, I think of when he says that no man looking, no man having put his hand to the plow and looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. So once you've started something, you need to see it through, like we was talking about in these other verses. But he says, no man looking back is fit for the kingdom of God. And I began to think about, specifically, this part is what led me to these these verses that we read today. But this looking back part, I think about, and just in my life, I think about all the things that, that I've done right that wouldn't be pleasing to God, and things that, I, I, I mean... I just wouldn't even want to talk about or anything like that because now, of course, I'm a different person. But why do we look back on those things? You know, your mind could begin to wonder if you really sit there and thought about it, try to think about all the many things you've done wrong. And I don't believe we could remember them all. We'd forget some. But why would we look back at these things? If, if God has forgave you of something, whatever that it might be, there's no point in looking back at it again. You're done being forgiven of this thing. If you look back at it, all you're going to do is bring more harm to yourself. And this can come in the form of people, right? People look back at our past and the things that we've done. Uh, the devil sure will. He'll look back at your past. What I'm saying is, is you've already got people. You've got the devil. You've got these other things looking back at your past. Why would you need to? If God's forgiven of you of things, you let that go. And, and make up your mind that you're actually going to follow the Lord. It says down here in this bottom part about the word fit. And when you begin to look at the word fit here and what it means, it doesn't um, really mean like physically fit or something like that. It means are you usable, right? Are you of use to our Lord and Savior? And really, that depends on you, you know. It's not that God hasn't given you some gifts. God's gave us all gifts and callings, and he's, he's gave us all jobs to do. But if we're not fit, if we're not ready to do those jobs, how will we be able to do them? God's ready to help us, but if we're not fit, if we're not, if you'll have it this way in the right condition, and... And I don't know uh, just exactly who I'm talking to right now, right? I'm talking to uh, a phone here where I'm recording a message. But I'll tell you this. God's put somebody on my heart that he's gave me a name for. You know, somebody that, that doesn't attend church with, with me anymore. And he's gave me another name that I don't have the name for. But he knows who that is. Now... God knows exactly who will listen to this message, or if you'll have it this way, this teaching, right? Um, I don't edit these things out. I just I just go as it goes. But um, God knows exactly who will listen to this, and I believe it's somebody that will listen to this that needs not to look back at the things that they've done, whether they be good or whether they be bad things, but to go forward in this, this new year and, and if you're that person, I mean, uh, I've been praying for you. Um, I already pray already for all my, my preteen class here. I love them to death. I want to tell them uh, that I miss them very much. But don't look back on, on the past that you've been in. God's not looking back at that neither. The Bible teaches me that Satan, he brings up accusations against us, right? Don't bring them up against yourself. If you If you need a better example... Of what I mean. We can go back to the book of Genesis. And we can look at Lot and his wife. Right? And the angels there, they tell her, don't 
don't be looking back. The Bible says, of course, she does. She looks back, and then she turns into a pillar of salt. So when God tells you don't be looking back into something that you had no business being part of, don't. Uh, I've I've had a lot of friends in my lifetime, and I, I love them dearly. Uh, but God has said before with certain people, he said, you can't be a part of them, you know. That don't mean you can't speak to them. That don't mean you can't be friends with them. Be nice to them. Tell them you love them. Talk to them on the phone or whatever. But that, if he says don't be part of them, that means don't get out and run around with them. Because they ain't going to do you any good. That don't mean you don't have to love them. But when God speaks to us and he tells us something, listen to that. Um, I, and I don't know who I will say this, but I want the very best for you. And, and I believe I'm talking to somebody today that's saved. I believe it's somebody that, that knows who God is and has looked back too much. And just to put it just as blunt as I can, you're just not fit. In the way that you need to be. And that's that's the way that God put it on my heart. So look at yourself. And, and, and you don't have to tell me anything. If you want to talk, I, I'm here to talk to. I give you my number. You can message me on Facebook. Whatever uh, you would like. But ask yourself. You know, look. Take a good look at yourself and say, am I fit? Am I able to be used for God right now in this place that I am in this current state? And if you're not able to be used for God, then you're going to have to pray about it, right? You're going to have to ask God to forgive you. You're going to have to get some help from him. And, and, and we as a church, MCM, we'll help you in any way that we can, or I will myself, you know, however that it would go. But as we step into this new year, there's plenty more people, right, that need to be saved. There's plenty more people that need a home church to be in. There's plenty more people that's backslidden. There's plenty more people that's sick. I mean, I could begin to name just countless things. There's a job for you to do. Somewhere or another that God's, God's gave to you. So be fit for that job, okay? If you need me or anything like that, feel free to get a hold of me. I'll pray with you. Do whatever you need to. But I want to tell you I love you. God bless you.